As synthetic biology continues to advance, it's exciting to think about the many ways in which this technology could be applied. Some current and potential applications include biofuel production, medical treatments, and construction of biomaterials. However, as with any technology, there is also a worry that techniques developed with the intent to improve our quality of life or our understanding of the world around us could also be used to cause harm. With synthetic biology, a major concern is whether new research could be used in the development of bioweapons. But what exactly is a bioweapon, and what are the ethics of using them in warfare? One of the main goals of terrorism is to spread fear and panic throughout a community. Terrorist attacks are committed because of political, religious, or other ideological goals. While other forms of terrorism typically use physical violence and force, the effects of bioterrorism might not be immediately noticeable, and their cause may be more difficult to discern. Groups choosing to engage via means of biological warfare often do because of its long-lasting effects. Sometimes these consequences go unnoticed for a few days, allowing the effects of the attack to spread over time. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, defines bioterrorism as the intentional release of viruses, bacteria, or other germs that can sicken or kill people, livestock, or crops. Many of these biological materials are found in nature, and it is only through human enhancement that they are made into weapons. Some examples include anthrax spores, which are normally dormant when found in the ground. Anthrax can be activated inside the human body and can cause extreme damage. When anthrax bacteria is ingested after activation, it can cause difficulty breathing, fever, and ulcers. Without medical intervention, only about 15% of victims survive, according to the CDC. Throughout history, many parties have utilized and been victims of bioterrorism. In 1763, the British Army collected blankets from smallpox hospitals and gifted them to susceptible Native American communities. During World War II, the Japanese Army Air Force dropped bombs full of fleas carrying the bubonic plague in Ningbo, China. There are several examples of successful bioterrorist attacks in the more recent past as well. In 1984, voters in Oregon were poisoned with salmonella to deter them from reaching the polls. Later, during the fall of 2001, the United States faced several anthrax attacks on members of media outlets and of Congress by government biodefense scientist Bruce Ivins in Frederick, Maryland. Modern defenses against bioterrorism are not specific to man-made viruses or bacteria. Dr. Anthony Fauci is an American immunologist who has been the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases since 1984. In 2002, he warned that although deliberate bioweapons can have devastating consequences, they are only potential threats that may or may not arise. Threats arising from nature, such as naturally occurring diseases, are inevitable. He argues that, by funding research that would combat future naturally occurring epidemics, scientists are also defending against potential man-made bioterrorism threats. One safety concern in publishing these studies is whether it would benefit humanity in the long run. Is it ethical to publish scientific information that can aid in the enhancement of a potential bioweapon? This debate is ongoing within the scientific community. On one hand, it would be beneficial to have scientists and citizens alike know what biological weapons exist and what characterizes particularly infectious diseases, so that they can identify and prepare for potential threats. Publications are also a crucial component of scientific research and collaboration. On the other hand, some worry that publishing certain types of research may aid in the development of potential bioweapons. Although no known bioterrorist attacks to date have utilized synthetic biology-related techniques, this is still an important ethical consideration, especially as new technologies continue to emerge.